Hello! It is week three of NaNoWriMo, though I am actually filming this intro about halfway into my week of vlogging. It is Monday morning, uh, the sun is shining through the window, and I have to make this quick so I can go to work, but I uh, thought I'd do a quick update on uh, some reading uh, pertaining to the Goodreads Choice Awards, because uh, I finished it up last weekend and uh, the semifinals concluded yesterday and uh, as I'm filming this I believe the finals will be uh, announced tomorrow uh, and I was able to vote for three books in the semifinals because <laughs> I finished the Buttigieg books. <laughs> so this one is uh, Chastin Buttigieg's uh, memoir about uh, his childhood and about coming out and about growing up in rural Michigan, but really I think a majority of it really is about meeting Pete and being on the campaign trail. I mean, some people apparently are complaining that there's not enough Pete in this, and I'm like, I think he's kind of an oversized uh, part of this book, I don't know. Although, uh, definitely from Chastin's perspective of the campaign and of dating and, and so forth, and uh, I mean, I really liked the book. I mean. He's uh, somebody who has a lot of nuance and a lot of empathy, even though he's gone through hard times. He has some understanding for like when he was bullied as a teen, that you know teens are in a rough place and that sort of thing. Uh, and also just navigating just all of the complexities of uh, people judging you on the campaign trail for being gay or not gay enough, or or you know what the media is spitting while you're trying to uh, run a campaign about uh, issues and people. You know, speaking as someone with a journalism degree, I do think uh, the way that the campaigns are, are uh, sort of uh, covered, it's so uh, reality TV-like, I don't know, I just it, it would be nice in a way that if uh, what he was talking about in here is a little bit more of a part of it. But anyway, I liked it. I mean, I don't think it's the best written, and I'm sure that part of the reason I liked it so much is just because I like him as a person, <laughs> but uh, I really did appreciate the nuance of things that he was talking about in here. And then, of course, the second book is uh, Pete Buttigieg's uh, recent book, Trust. Uh, it's just in the regular nonfiction category. It's a treatise about uh, how uh, Americans need to have more trust again in our institutions and in each other. And uh, out in the world, people need to trust us more as well. And a lot of that has been uh, harmed a lot by the Trump administration, but it's sort of been... Um, on a walk to this area, like uh, through uh, presidential administrations, and uh, we've sort of been um, goading ourselves uh, to like government a bit less and to trust it a bit less, uh, and uh, to question um, things that uh, maybe shouldn't be questioned. It's, you know, it's a fine line about that, but like when it comes to um, questioning experts, say, when the majority of the scientific community agrees about the coronavirus or about the climate uh, and being in trouble, like, you know, when we're starting to question that majority consensus, then uh, we're just in a really uh, paranoid place that doesn't help anybody. So uh, Pete goes through a lot of that, although he also talks about the fact that uh, there's a lot about uh, U.S. past that hasn't been trustworthy, especially to minorities, especially to black people, and how uh, sort of a grassroots uh, faith effort between um, people from those communities, especially in um, march and protest spaces, was a way for them to speak truth to power and to make positive change. Uh, so uh, yeah, there's a lot packed in here. It made me grapple with my cynicism. Maybe I should try to, you know, be better with that. <laughs> Both of these books, I think, are so millennial, but maybe I'm just being biased about it. <laughs> but, but I just feel like uh, the way that they talk about issues, about demanding a certain type of empathy and sort of big tent inclusion, and there's so something rather millennial about it, or like checking privilege and that sort of thing, uh, and uh, finding a balance between, like, you know, if I mean, like, especially in Pete's book about, like, you know, we all have to have some sort of shared American identity without getting rid of... Uh, you know, individual identities, which uh, is a change from, like, say, a hundred or so years ago when it was all assimilate, 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 be as, you know, white Protestant as you can be, if, if you can be. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I, I really did appreciate them enough to vote for them in the, uh, you know, celebrity popular Goodreads Choice Awards, you know, I do my serious voting for the booktube prize. <laughs> but anyway, I think I should move on from this now, and remember this is a writing vlog and not just a Goodreads and Buttigieg appreciation vlog, so <laughs> let's get back to it. We have a very special virtual write-in here today because 
What day is it today, China? <laughs> it's Friday the 13th. So, since it's Friday the 13th, um, we decided we would do something a little bit more suspenseful. And like, so all of our um, kind of sprints and discussions are going to be based off of suspense. So I love suspense. It's one of my favorite genres. Um, I'm not that great at writing it, but I will try. <laughs> Yeah, so I can introduce the first uh, sprint prompt of China, you want to be the timer since you're clearly so much better at it than I am. Um, so our first sprint slash prompt is going to be for five minutes. Um, we're going to ask you to write a scene where your main character is nervous. What are they nervous about? And so that's obviously a prompt that you can just uh, go and run with. But I want to also add a reminder that if you want to use this time to you know, create a space for you to work on your NaNoWriMo project. I mean, you can obviously do both, or you can all those dolls. But if you, like, you can follow the prompt, you don't have to follow the prompt, you can do anything so long as you are writing. So, yeah. Once again, Catherine will post it in the chat, and China, let us know when you're ready. Okay, so we're going to start this first sprint with five minutes, starting now. just finished my mom and aunties and actually honorary uncle as well book club where we discussed uh, The Inheritance of Loss by Kira Desai. I feel a little better because I think I'm not the only one who was kind of overwhelmed by uh, the plot and how sweeping it was and how colonialism was kind of more of a character than any of the other characters. <laughs> we had some people who didn't even finish it and uh, I don't know, the conversations in a book club are always interesting because uh, in a way, it can lend itself more to talking about these sweeping issues than specific character beats and like, you know, trying to analyze characters, or at least that's the way it's been in this group. So we did have some nice conversation about colonialism, and then it actually turned, I guess unsurprisingly, into talk about uh, the American election and recent uh, politics in America. <laughs> Uh, and then we did go back into characters and that sort of stuff and just talked in general and it was a lot of fun and we picked our next book for next month, but uh, yeah, and now it's time to get back to writing. I don't know if this is something we can do in one minute. Someone wants to know any tips for keeping track of your characters. Oh, uh, a series Bible. I always use a series Bible, including like whose eyes are green, whose eyes are blue, because I will always forget and put the wrong eye color. Spreadsheets. <laughs> 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 yeah, you see out here more. Yeah, I'll see if I can get the blank version of the spreadsheet that Kyra and I use um, that I can give to you guys by the end of the chat because I really like the spreadsheet method. <laughs> it's a good idea. Okay, and we're off for another 15 minute chat. Just a quick reminder we are going to mute ourselves so you don't have to hear our typing, and we will be back in 15. Turns out the uh, MAGA protests in D.C. were a bigger deal than I was thinking they might be, you know, with clashes and arrests and a lot of more people than I thought even just came, I guess. Uh, usually not a lot of uh, conservative MAGA folks come to D.C., uh, but I imagine that the, uh, the election really motivated them to do so this time, and they were rewarded, of course, with the president uh, giving them a salute before he went off to play golf. Uh, I don't know, it's just really getting to me, uh, you know, because I live and I work in this area, I'll actually be walking by some of the areas where the clashes happen when I go to work tomorrow. Uh, so I'm just trying to remind myself this is probably not going to be a long-term thing, you know, the election is pretty much in the bag, I would think. <laughs> oh, it's just, oh, so much... Uh, dissent from the other side, but you know, the numbers are speaking for themselves and on the 20th we'll have a new administration and maybe we can heal and maybe things can get better, but uh, it is distressing kind of to read all of uh, all of this stuff right now. So I'm trying to soothe myself a little bit with uh, some escapist TV watching. It's the start of The Undoing uh, airing on HBO right now. It's uh, rich people murder drama, <laughs> fun times, and it's based off of a book. <laughs> I guess a little bit of a reminder of uh, where some of our writing careers might uh, land us. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. 
just got out of my Chavruta program, which I've talked about in the last couple of videos, is a traditional Jewish study of texts with a partner, and we meet on Zoom or Google Meet, of course, because of the virus, uh, and we study a few texts uh, from a class that we're both involved in, and uh, I think this week worked better for both of us than last week. Uh, it dealt with the theme of mercy as uh, shown in the Bible and then in commentaries uh, throughout history, and uh, proved how, because uh, we're in, made in God's image and uh, God is merciful, or, you know, attempts to be, that we should also attempt to be. Uh, so that was nice, and, and the, the pieces fit together really nicely. It's just nice uh, to see how throughout history uh, Jewish uh, scholars have uh, related to the text and, uh, you know, expanded on it. And uh, in terms of my fantasy novel, which is uh, based in part on uh, Jewish thinking, I would say the idea of mercy is a pretty big uh, thing in the back of my mind that um, it might go against the grain of some people who are more uh, about vengeance, but uh, in generally speaking, the uh, journey my uh, protagonist goes on uh, takes her toward the path of mercy and uh, towards uh, more uh, identification with uh, the other nations, as it were. Uh, so we'll have to see how that goes as I continue writing. Next on my list of uh, TV shows that I'm watching instead of doing writing that I should desperately be doing is the His Dark Materials premiere, which is now airing on HBO. Huzzah! <laughs> In addition to taking away from my writing time, it's also making me feel depressed about uh, the state of my own fantasy world building because, uh, like last year, I intend, uh, I assume, that I will be uh, drawn in hook, line, and sinker into this show. So, man, do I love this intro and how just maximist it is and, like, expanding out into bigger and bigger worlds. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Hey everyone, uh, this is my first time going live on uh, YouTube, so I had to figure out all the buttons. <laughs> um, making sure I'm not on mute. Okay, uh, can you guys hear me okay? <laughs> Hello. Awesome. Well, I am Sonia Doing. I am your host. Yay, you can hear me. I'm your host today. Um, I am, let's see, I'm a award-winning creative writer, published author, and two of my books were actually started out as nano novels, so you can do it. I know you can. Um, I'm also founder of the Women's Thriller Writers Association, and I am municipal liaison for Albuquerque, New Mexico. And if you don't know what an ML is, basically we help people write, get going writing, so hopefully I can get you all some more words today. And right, we're gonna work around having a theme today. Our theme is going to be strong female characters. So we're gonna talk around some sprints and some props around that. Um, but first, what is a virtual writing um, uh, event? So basically, I'm gonna give you some thoughts and ideas and we're gonna do some sprints. And hopefully my prompts help you. If it's not a prompt that speaks to you, then just go on and do whatever speaks to you in that writing sprint. And for sprints, the idea is that you just keep typing. Don't edit, please don't edit. Just keep writing, because the idea is you're locking that editor away and you can edit in January, right? When you come back to work on this novel. So right now it's just getting words on paper. And hello and welcome so much to the uh, official Nano Writing. I'm so excited to be here doing this with you today. I can't believe it, actually. My name is Diane Morrison. I'm also known as Sable Aradia on the uh, Nano website. I'm the one of the MLs from the Okanagan region in BC, Canada. And uh, I'm, I'm an author. There's some of my books over there. Um, Nano is why. So I'm so pleased to be able to be doing this today to give back a little to this wonderful community that has made a dream possible for me. So, and hello everyone, there's so many people. I, I stream writing on Twitch, but I'm not used to this uh, active of a chat, so bear with me as I try to keep up with everyone. <laughs> 
And also, I'm an author, points to books behind me as a goal, says uh, Ask Skill 11. You can do it. You can do it. And, uh, you know, one word at a time, one day at a time, that is how you do it, right? So, and that is what we're here for. There's really no getting around this. Uh, I think this has been the most difficult nano that I've had in a long time. I'm not only having trouble keeping up with my word count, I'm having trouble keeping up with like my vlogs and <laughs> everything surrounding nano. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure coronavirus and just uh, the awkwardness of this year has something to do with it. And I think part of it is me as well. I don't think I was as prepared to write my fantasy project as I thought I was. I, didn't do enough Preptober stuff, I guess. I'm still in love with my story. I <laughs> just, I'm not writing it very well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm coming to the conclusion that maybe I really need to start reading more epic fantasy in my life. <laughs> I'm getting so sidetracked with the literary fiction, I guess. But speaking of, I thought I would end this vlog the way I began it with book reviews, or one book review this time for, you know, a literary mainstream book, The Invitation. This is a book um, by Anne Sherian that made it onto uh, my TBR from the Jewish Book Council website because there's a tiny bit of Jewish material in this, but it's predominantly about uh, Indian Americans. Uh, and the entire premise takes place, well, over a course of, I guess, a few days where um, as middle-aged adult, these four friends uh, come back together when one of them holds a lavish party for his uh, son who just graduated from MIT. But a lot of the story is backstory, so there's like that heavy narrative kind of passive stuff in it. It's also incredibly dramatic, maybe sometimes, especially near the end, melodramatic, which actually made it quite, quite fun to read, <laughs> you know, when uh, Nano's going so poorly. <laughs> uh, if I'm going to be reading, I should read something, you know, that uh, doesn't take a lot of effort. <laughs> uh, I mean, I still learned, uh, you know, bits and pieces about uh, different uh, ethnic groups in India, which was really cool, and I appreciated, you know, some of uh, the uh, interpersonal conflict uh, in this book. I just think overall it was a little uh, soap opera-ish, <laughs> but uh, it, it was a, a fun time. Any hoodle, uh, one thing I might say nice about this NaNoWriMo experience uh, with coronavirus is how many more write-ins uh, the NaNo uh, channel's doing. You might have just seen some of uh, snippets from them uh, just on this video. Uh, got to uh, hear from municipal liaisons from far-flung places for me, or actually relatively close to me, considering <laughs> the scope of NaNoWriMo, but uh, <laughs> it was just still really fun, you know, to remember in these times uh, how many people from all around the world take part in this project. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe, uh, you know, they always every year do a couple of write-ins, but maybe uh, in coming years we'll do more online stuff, though admittedly I will be very excited and very happy if and when uh, we go back to having all of the in-person events and I uh, get to go to all the libraries and cafes and so forth in the DC area again. <laughs> so, uh, But in the meantime, I can't fault the broader nano community for not giving me lots of inspiration and as I go into the final week of the uh, month, I guess I will be leaning heavily on it because we're going to finish this thing. Huzzah! <laughs> Keep writing, everyone.